In this video, we're going to be focusing on three areas of the periodic table. We're going to specifically be looking at three different categories of elements, which chemists call metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. Each of these categories has its own distinctive properties. We can break this down into both physical and chemical properties. Physical properties are things like melting point, boiling point, density, luster, color, malleability, and conductivity. Chemical properties describe tendencies of elements to react or not react with other chemicals. Although this is not addressed in this video, you can also find separate videos in which all 12 of the elements that are talked about in this video are placed in acids and copper to chloride to determine whether or not they will react with those chemicals. This video will specifically be looking at four physical properties. The four physical properties that we will be looking at in this video include malleability, color, conductivity, and luster. Twelve elements will be shown. When you get to each element, I would advise that you stop the video and try to determine these four properties of the element. Malleability, which is often discussed along with ductility, is the ability of an element to be hammered, pressed, or rolled into sheets. Ductility is the ability of the element to be drawn into wires. If an element is malleable, when pressure is applied to it, it tends to bend. The element tends to be flexible. In other words, if you hit it with a hammer, it would take a new shape. If an element is not malleable, the opposite of that is brittle. Elements that are brittle are not flexible. If you were to hit them with a hammer, they would shatter into a lot of different little pieces. So as you watch the video, look carefully at the element. Does it look like it's been bent into a specific shape? Does it look like if you were to hit it with a hammer, it would turn into a powder? After you determine the element's malleability, consider the element's color. This is an easy category to determine. Simply look at the element and write down what color it is. Is it yellow? Is it black? Is it silver? Is it brown? That's a pretty easy thing for you to do. Conductivity is the third physical property that you will be analyzing in this video. If an element can conduct, it usually is able to conduct both electricity and heat. When an element can conduct electricity, it means that electric current can flow easily through the element. That means that electrons can flow freely through the material. We'll be using a conductivity tester to determine whether or not the element can conduct. If the light bulb turns red, the element is conductive. If it does not, it means it cannot conduct electricity. The last category is called luster. Luster is a fancy way of saying shininess. You will look at the element and observe whether or not the element is shiny or dull. As I mentioned before, we will be looking at 12 different elements on the periodic table. The visual in front of you now is color-coded. It shows the three different areas of the periodic table. In blue, you will notice metals. Observe that almost 80% of the periodic table is made up of metallic elements. In red, on the right side of the periodic table, we have the nonmetals. And then there is often what's called the staircase elements. Those are shown in green. These are classified as metalloids. Within this video, 
you will try to determine the properties of the metals, the metalloids, and the nonmetals. One thing that I want you to keep in mind is that these properties are not absolute. There are always one or two elements that don't seem to follow the rules, and that's okay. We are looking for generalizations. For instance, which of these categories conduct electricity? Or does this category of elements tend to have a certain color? It doesn't mean that they all will follow that pattern, but there certainly is a characteristic pattern of many of the elements within this category. So let's go ahead and begin. The first element that we're going to look at is aluminum. As you can tell from the color-coded periodic table, aluminum is a metal. As I mentioned earlier, for each of the 12 elements, please stop the video and consider those four properties. Again, you're going to be looking at malleability, color, conductivity, and luster. The second element that we're going to be looking at is calcium. Calcium is a metal, as you can see from the blue color coding on the periodic table. Calcium is a very reactive metal. It oxidizes very easily, which simply means it reacts with oxygen in the air to produce calcium oxide. I've carefully selected a few pieces of calcium that came directly out of the bottle. I specifically tried to find a few pieces of calcium that had not oxidized yet and still had some shininess to them. The third element that we're looking at is carbon. There are several different forms of carbon. In this video, you will be looking specifically at two forms of carbon, activated charcoal and graphite. The two different forms of carbon look quite different. Activated charcoal comes in the form of a powder. It has a very high surface area. It's often used for purification or removing impurities. You may have seen carbon in this form in a fish tank. The second form of carbon that is shown is graphite. Graphite is often found in pencil lead. The reason I'm showing you two different forms of carbon is because I want you to understand that they have different abilities to conduct electricity. This is due to structural differences in how the carbon atoms are bonded together. As you look at these two different forms of carbon, you'll notice that physically they look quite a bit different. One of them is shown as a powder and the other one looks more like a solid rod. Keep in mind that when we talk about these three areas of the periodic table, metals, nonmetals, and metalloids, and we discuss their physical and chemical properties. We're looking for generalities. We want to know about their tendencies. What colors do they tend to be? Do they tend to be shiny or dull? Do they tend to be malleable or brittle? And do they tend to conduct electricity? Once in a while, we will find an element that doesn't follow the pattern of the other elements in that category, and that's okay.
The next element that we'll be looking at is copper. Copper is a metal that's often used in electrical wiring in homes. Our next element is magnesium. Magnesium is an alkali earth metal. The next metal that we're looking at is lead. In the next video, we'll be looking at the element sulfur. Sulfur is a non-metal. You will be looking at sulfur in a large lump form and also in what looks like a powder or a dust. In the next video, we take a look at silicon. Silicon is the only metalloid that we will be looking at in this series of videos. The next element that we will be looking at is the metal tin. The next element that we are looking at is the metal zinc. The next element that we will be looking at is the metal nickel.
The last element that we will be looking at in this video is iodine. Iodine is a non-metal.